to narrate the 1952 film, starting with the tie with Penn State and ending with the victory over Indiana, which put us into a tie for the Big Ten Championship with Wisconsin. So let me... Purdue's season started at State College, Pennsylvania, as Purdue wearing white uniforms were battling Penn State. With two minutes left in the first quarter, Rados of Penn State handed off to Vesseling with fumbled. Purdue's Eddie Zemble recovered on the 50. Shortly after, Purdue quarterback Roy Evans, calling signals for the Boilermakers, ran wide to the left, then cut downfield, looted a pair of Penn State tacklers along the sideline, ran all the way to the Penn 14-yard line for a first down. Dale Samuels came back to call the next play. He faded straight back, and then threw a pass to Bernie Flowers for the first touchdown. The kick was good, and Purdue led 7-0. On the third down, after several punt exchanges, Roy Evans again in a quarterback. Once again, Roy faded and pitched long to Phil Klesik, who'd gotten into the clear on the Nittany Lion nine. But Phil dropped the ball. With fourth down coming up, Purdue's Norm Montgomery lined up in punt formation and kicked one deep to Don Iyer, Penn State safety man who was downed on the 13-yard line. Penn State started an 86-yard drive after this punt, with Rados bringing the drive to a near climax as he passed out to the right to Matt Janicic. Janicic was knocked out of bounds by Zembel on the Purdue three. On the next play, Bob Pollard smashed over left guard for the score, seven. The second half was only five minutes old when Montgomery of Purdue punted again. Standing on his own 14, Monty booted to Don Iyer. Iyer gathered it in on the Penn State 41, scooted across the field, and then ran down the near sideline. Phil Matea finally hauled him down on Purdue's 17-yard line. On the next play, Rados faked to Pollard, then ran out to his left and threw one to Joe Yukika for six more points. The kick was wide, but Penn State led 13-7. Purdue retaliated quickly after the kickoff. On Penn State's 22, Samuels hands to Pobajewski, who smashes over center for nine yards. Then, Samuels hits Flowers in the left flat for seven more yards. Capping the 95-yard drive, the Boilermakers start a sweep to the right with Samuels carrying but he gives on the reverse to Klesek, who sweeps back to the left and races the last six yards with a score that ties the game at 13 all. Samuel's kick was wide. Penn State couldn't gain after taking the kickoff and were forced to punt. Don Iyer does the booting for Penn State, and Francie Gutman handles the kick for Purdue, returning to the Boilermaker 37-yard line. Purdue lined up in a wing tee to the left. Klesek took the handoff, burst over right guard, stiff-armed a tackler, and sprinted 63 yards to score. Speed like this was missed later on in the season when Klesek was out with a knee injury. The conversion was good, and Purdue was ahead 20 to 13. Kirk Jones intercepted a Penn State pass, but as Samuels runs out to the right and throws one intended for Johnny Kerr, Don Iyer returns the compliment and the pass at the Purdue 31-yard line. Nine plays later, with Penn State set right, Rados pitches to Janicic, who cuts in, then cuts out, and goes to the Purdue two-yard line. Penn State, in a wing tee to the left, sends Bob Pollard into the line, but linebacker Norm Montgomery nails him short of a score. Pollard signals called again, and this time Ted Locke shuts the door on him. On third down, quarterback Tony Rado sneaks over with the points that make the final score 20 to 20. Shortly after receiving the opening kickoff, Ohio State in the light jerseys calls on fullback John Halle. Halle is hit, fumbles, and sophomore Tom Bettis recovers for Purdue on Ohio State's 28. With the ball on the Ohio State 18-yard line, Samuels calls signals. 
Takes the snap and rolls out to the left, then pitches a pass to Bernie Flowers. Flowers is dumped for a seven yard gain. With Purdue and a wing tee to the right, the line crouches down. Samuels again runs out to the right this time. Then throws to Jerry Thorpe. Jerry hustles to the four before he's knocked out of bounds. On the next play, Samuels gives to Schmeling. Max slants over left tackle and into the end zone as Purdue goes out in front seven to nothing. In the second period, Ohio State lines up in a straight tee, and Borton throws one to Fred Bruni that's too long and falls incomplete. On third down, it's John Halley up the middle for the Buckeyes, with Purdue's Walt Ballou stopping him for a two-yard gain. Ohio State's forced to kick, and the ball is snapped to Peterson, standing on his own 20. John Kerr, Purdue's right end, crashes in to block the kick, and Tom Bettis chasing the ball, Grabs it up on the nine-yard line. Kerr puts a block on the punter, and Bettis rumbles the rest of the way, and Purdue leads 14 to nothing. With time running out in the first half, and Purdue in their wing tee, Samuels hands off to fullback Dan Kobajewski. Kobo bangs into a Buckeye and then fumbles. Ohio's Tony Priscilla recovers for the Bucks. On the first play, Ohio State comes out in a straight tee. Borton takes a snap, steps back into the pocket, and throws a pass to left end Bob Grimes. Phil Matea brought him down on the one-yard line. Ohio State employing the straight tee again sends Borton into the line on a sneak, but Purdue's line pinches and stops him. On the next try, Borton managed to make it over. The kick was good, and the teams left the field at halftime with Purdue in front, 14 to second. In the second half, Ohio State moved the ball to Purdue's 47. Borton takes to the air again and throws another one to Grimes. Earl Henniger leaps high in the air to deflect the ball, and Phil Matea completes the interception. A block by Tom Bettis gets Phil into the clear, and Phil speeds down the sideline for a Purdue TD. However, Kerr is called for illegal use of his hands, and the touchdown's called back, and the ball given to Purdue on the 30. Seconds later, Purdue has the ball in the Ohio State 16. Samuels runs wide to the right. Sets, and then throws to end Tom Redding around the 9. He goes to the six before being stacked up. On the next play with Purdue set left, Samuels runs out to the right. This time Dale fires another forward pass to Redinger in the flat. This one covered three more yards. Again, the Boilermakers call on pile driving Max Schmeling. Max goes over left guard, steamrollers fearless Fred Bruni on the two, and crashes into the end zone for the score, and Purdue leads 21 to seven. In the closing two minutes, Dan Molchan takes a Samuels handoff and squirts straight ahead for five. He fumbles as he's hit, and Ohio State recovers on the Purdue 23. Ohio State, using the T formation, passes again, Borton to Fred Bruni. Bruni goes for nine yards, so he's knocked out of bounds by two Purdue defenders. Then John Halley, Buckeye line cracker, powers to the nine before Husky Tom Betta stops him. With Purdue in a seven-man line, Borton tosses one down the middle to the right end Dean Duggar, and he's pulled down inside the two-yard line. There was just over a minute left in the game as Borton sneaks over for the second and final Ohio State score. And the game ended 21-14, Purdue. In their second conference game, Purdue wearing dark jerseys was matched against Iowa. Bernie Bennett of Iowa barrels over right guard for eight yards before Montgomery and Ballou bring him down. On the next play, it's Bennett again taking a direct pass from center. This time, Bernie fumbles and Earl Henniger tackles him. Francie Goodman, Purdue's freshman halfback, recovers on the Iowa 33. A few plays later, the Boilermakers go into their wing tee to the left. And Dale Samuels pegs a pass inside the five. It's just a little too long for John Kerr to grab. Purdue sets a halfback to the right next, and the handoff goes to Max Schmeling on the draw play over left tackle. 
Max gains four yards before the Iowa secondary halts him. Now watch this terrific catch by John Kerr. From the T formation, Samuels fades to the 35 and uncorks a long one into the end zone. Kerr leaps high and makes an acrobatic catch for the first touchdown that put Purdue in front, 7 0. After receiving the kickoff, Iowa started on their own 25 from a single wing to the right. The ball is snapped to fullback Broder, who moves over right guard. However, he fumbles, and Jim Wojciechowski falls on it for Purdue. After moving to the Iowa 8, Samuels gives to Schmeling. Max hits over left tackle at the two yard line. Lining up in the same formation, Samuels calls the same play, and Schmeling drives over the goal line for the Golden Black second score. The point after try was blocked, but Purdue led 13 to nothing. Rolling on an 80 yard march late in the first half, Purdue moves up to the line of scrimmage. Dale Samuels calls signals. Then Dale fades to throw a pass down the middle to Bernie Flowers. Bernie takes it on the Iowa 40 and runs all the way to the 30. Samuel's number 10 jersey was torn in this drive, so he switched to number 41. From the wing tee to the left, Max Schmeling breaks over right guard and moves seven yards to Iowa's six. Three plays later, as Purdue sets a halfback to the left, Samuels gives to Schmeling and Max splits the line to score from one yard out. The kick is good and the score is 20 to nothing. In the second half, Iowa goes into a single wing, strong right on Purdue's 48. Binky Broder takes the pass from center and gets away for a 16-yard gain before Ray Pacer plunks him down on Purdue's 32. It's Broder again on this next play, a straight buck. This time, Binky drops the ball and Walt Ballou recovers for the Boilermakers on their own 34. Purdue's ensuing touchdown drive was climaxed with this play. Dale Samuels faded back to his left, threw a long pass to All-American Bernie Flowers, who took the ball away from two Iowa men on the two, then stepped over for the score that made it 27-0 in favor of Purdue. In the fourth quarter on their own 38, Hawk quarterback Jack Hess passed to Dan McBride and Iowa's 46. McBride flipped the ladder over rapid Robert Stearns, who raced 54 yards down the near sideline to score. Iowa converted and failed 27 to 7. Winding up a 91 yard drive, Purdue lines up in the wing tee to the right. Pleasek gets the handoff and cuts off right tackle of the Hawkeye four. The wing tee is left this time as Phil tries again to punch over for the score. On the quickie, he bowls over left tackle to the one. Purdue tries again, but this time an official's flag comes out and the Boilermakers are penalized to the six for backfield in motion. Trying to get the five yards back, Schmeling slants over right tackle from the straight tee and battles to the three. With fourth and three coming up, Samuels keeps. Dale starts wide to his left and then cuts back inside end to score. He converts and it's 34 to 7 with Purdue ahead. Late in the fourth quarter, Jim Riker tries up the middle for Purdue. But Jim fumbled and Iowa's wife recovered on the Purdue 40. Two plays later, running from their straight tee, Stearns of Iowa threw from the 17 to Brightsman on the one. Riker picked the ball, but Brightsman caught the pass and scored, making it 34 to 14. With less than 30 seconds remaining, Iowa kicked to Purdue. Herkimer dropped the ball on the 14, picked it up on the 16, swung to his right, cut up field, and then fumbled as he was hit on the Purdue 25. Iowa recovered on the 30. On the first play after this recovery, Iowa shifts into a deep wing right, the ball going to the fullback. He handed off to the wing back, Stearns, who then threw a pass into the right flat. Bob Leonard, backing the line for Purdue, intercepted this pass, an outdistanced rapid Robert, Going 77 yards to score the last TD. Samuel's kick was good and Purdue won 41 to 14.
pattern for this game was set on the opening kickoff as Notre Dame, wearing the light jerseys, kicked to Rex Brock on the Purdue six. Rex started straight up field, and then fumbled as he reached the 20 and was upended with a terrific tackle. Notre Dame recovered. Notre Dame moved to the Purdue six in three plays, and then as Carey handed off to Latner, Latner bobbled the ball. Big skin rolled free into the end zone where three Purdue men tried for it but missed as Notre Dame recovered for their first touchdown. They converted and led seven to nothing. Notre Dame regained possession after the kickoff. From a wing tee right, Carey passed from his own 30 to O'Neill. O'Neill just brushed the ball and Purdue's Mateo hooked onto it and fell down immediately on the Irish 46. After advancing, Purdue came out in the tee on the Notre Dame 27. Samuels rolled out to the left, faded back about 10 yards, and then rifled the pass to Flowers. Bernie leaped high in the air for the pass, leading Carabine on the goal line and scored easily as the Purdue senior started to throw their derbies in the air. Samuels' conversion tied the score at 7 all. Then came the first time for the Notre Dame sucker shift. Notre Dame tried to score now from the Purdue one, but they were offside, and the ball was placed back on the six. Again, the Irish pull the Boilermakers offside with their shift. And once more, the penalty places the ball on Purdue's one. This time, Notre Dame's carry hands to Worden, who slants over right tackle for the tie-breaking score. And it's 14-7, Notre Dame. As time was running out in the first half, and Notre Dame was on Purdue 48, Ralph Guglielmi threw a pass intended for Joe Heath. Mateo intercepted for Purdue, started upfield, and then slipped and fumbled as he tried to cut to the right. The Irish recovered on Purdue's 37. With seven seconds left, Guglielmi faded to his right and lofted a pass to Latner, who gathered it in on the two and scored as the half ended with Notre Dame 20, Purdue 7. In the fourth period, Notre Dame decided to run another split T play. Carey kept the ball and after starting wide left, moved inside his left end and upfield. He fumbled when Matea grabbed him and Eddie Zamba recovered for Purdue on Notre Dame 35. With Purdue on a wing T to the left, Kosminski carried over left tackle for two yards. Then Evans, back in at quarterback, faded straight back and uncorked a nice pass down the middle to Flowers. Bernie twisted away from the Notre Dame tackler on the 12 and went over for Purdue's final score. The kick was good and the score 20 to 14. Purdue had Notre Dame bottled up with third and 15 when Tom Carey dropped back and sailed a long pass downfield to Art Hunter. Hunter took the pass on the Purdue 43 and ran to the 27 before he was dragged down. The Irish proceeded to the two where Joe Heat took a handoff and hit over right tackle for the last score. The final result, Notre Dame the winner, 26 to 14. Before 71,000 fans at Illinois, the Boilermakers in light jerseys moved the opening kickoff up to their 39 yard line. Then fullback Max Schmeling barges over right tackle for seven yards. After a five-yard penalty against them, Purdue lines up on the wing tee. Samuels pitches out to Schmeling, who runs wide, then cuts sharply and pounds down the middle of the field unmolested. Millions of people watched this 59-yard TV dash on television as Purdue jumped to a 7-0 lead. Illinois struck back quickly. From a tee formation, Tommy O'Connell steps back into the pocket and whips a pass to Rocky Ryan in the flat. Ryan steps out of bounds on Purdue's 48. With a first down, Illinois lines up in a straight tee. O'Connell fades and then fires a pass straight down the middle to Ryan, who makes the catch on the Purdue 21, and then outdistances Purdue's Matea for an Illini score. The point after is missed, and Purdue leads 7 to 6. On their second march, the Boilermakers start on their 33. Samuels calls a run-out pass to the right, then he throws to right end Tom Redinger, who stopped on the 50.
Evans replaces Samuels at quarterback as Purdue sets a man right. Evans steps back and pitches another pass to Redinger, who takes it on the 34 and carries to the 26 yard line of Illinois. Samuels is sent back into the game when Purdue's advanced to the Illini three. He runs to the left and then flips a short pass to Bernie Flowers, who makes an easy catch in the end zone for another Purdue score, and Purdue leads 13 to 6. Later, Purdue moves the ball to the Illinois 45. In the wing tee to the right, Samuels throws another pass to Tom Redding. Tom makes the catch on Illinois' 35-yard line, then fights his way to the 30. Purdue picks up five yards in two plays, and then Samuels drifts back to the left and throws his second touchdown strike to Flowers, who's gotten behind two Illini defenders in the end zone. The kick is made, and it's Purdue 20 to 6. Illinois took the kickoff, and with the first down on their own 21, T formation, O'Connell passes. Safety man Phil Matea intercepts for Purdue on Illinois' 33, bounces off Phil Ehrman on the 30, and continues on for five more yards. Purdue comes out in the wing tee to the left on the next play. And Samuels takes the snap and fades straight back. For the third time, he throws a touchdown strike to Bernie Flowers, who sneaked behind the same two defenders again. Samuels converts, and Purdue leads 27-6. to six. The third quarter was scoreless until the closing minutes. Ken Miller of Illinois is punting from his own end zone late in the quarter. Standing just inside his own end line, Miller takes lots of time. The ball is finally snapped. His kick soars out to the Illini 40-yard line, and Phil Matea fields it, swings to his right, then gets a fine block from a teammate, and finally he's knocked out of bounds on the Illini 33. Lining up in a wing tee to the left, Purdue calls on Schmeling again. Samuels pitches out to the left to Big Max, and a beautiful piece of running moves the ball 16 yards downfield to the Illinois 17. Third down and a yard to go for a touchdown was the situation that faced the Boilermakers as they came out in the wing tee right. Henniger tries for the yardage, but he's stopped cold. The Purdue team tries from a tee formation on their last chance. Samuels gives to Henniger again, and this time Earl gets enough distance for the score that puts Purdue in front, 34 to 6. After Purdue kicked off, Illinois shifted into their famous spread formation on their own 32. O'Connell threw from this spread to Baird Stewart, who was forced out of bounds on the Illini 45 by Ehrman and Gutman. Illinois tried two running plays and then went into their spread again. O'Connell threw to Ryan this time. He was tackled by Gutman on Purdue's 39. Illinois found the spread formation was working, so they employed it still another time as O'Connell passes to Rocky Ryan. Ryan makes a beautiful catch, swings right, keeps his balance, and cuts downfield. Herman finally tackles him on the Purdue six. In a tee this time and with third down coming up on Purdue's one, Pete Backer starts right and then cuts back inside his right end and scores. The kick was not good and Purdue led 34 to 12. Shortly after, Purdue's in possession on their 49. Henniger takes the handoff and wades up the middle. He jerks away from an Illini on the 45 and goes 14 more yards to the 31 before he stopped. Then Samuel shovels the ball to Gene Barnhorn, who's at fullback for the Holcomb men. Barnhorn gets a yard around right end. On this play, Dale Samuels tied the Big Ten record for pass completions in one game as he threw his fourth payoff pitch to Tom Redding. Tom cut sharply to his left, then angled for the end zone, and racked up the touchdown that brought the final score to a rousing 40-12 in favor of Purdue. <laughs> Following a 15-yard penalty against them, Purdue in light jerseys is forced to kick. Montgomery, standing on his own goal line, gets away a short kick that bounces on Purdue's 31-yard line and then out on the 29. Taking advantage of this break, Michigan State, from a wing tee, sends fullback Wayne Benson over right tackle for six yards. He's tackled by Walt Valu. Michigan State comes out in a wing tee to the right, and Captain Don McAuliffe cracks over left guard for a two-yard gain. 
shifting to a deep wing to the right. Benson takes the snap and hands to McCauley. Don runs off right tackle all the way to the Purdue 10 yard line. Then the Spartans switch into the wing tee strong to the left. Billy Wells gets the handoff this time and angles outside left tackle. He fights to the Purdue three. Set strong to the right once more, fullback Benson hands to McAuliffe again. He rolls over right tackle, and Michigan State has its first touchdown to go ahead seven to nothing. The Holcomb coached crew make a valiant effort to tie the nation's number one team as Dale Samuels throws over the left side of the line to Flowers and makes a leaping one hand catch and goes to the 50. Henniger picked up two yards by running, and then Samuels throws from Purdue's spread formation to Henniger who takes the pass back of the line and races to the Spartan 41. Purdue lines up on the wing tee with a halfback set left. Samuels runs out to his left and then throws a long pass to Flowers in the end zone. However, Corliss of Michigan State gets a hand up and bats the ball down. Samuels completed a short pass for Purdue, and now from a wing tee, he fades the throw again. This time he's rushed and fumbles as he's hit. Ed Luke of Michigan State recovers on the Purdue 42. A roughness penalty on Purdue gave Michigan State a first down later on the Purdue 9. Michigan State shifts into a deep ring to the right, and on a buck lateral play, McAuliffe is down for a one-yard loss. On second down, halfback Billy Wells picks up two yards before linebacker Norm Montgomery hits him down. The Spartans shift from their wing tee into a single wing, strong right. Usyk runs to his right to pass, but sees daylight and elects to run. He sweeps wide and then knives into the end zone where Phil Matea cartwheels him, but too late to prevent the score. Again, Slomak converts and the Spartans lead 14 to nothing. In the second half, Michigan State couldn't move the ball, and as they try to punt, Jim Wojciechowski rushes in from his left-hand spot and deflects the ball. Ted Locke recovers for Purdue on the Spartan 47. After ground gains have been offset by a penalty, Samuels fades to his right and throws deep to Bernie Flowers on the 12. The great end makes a sensational over-the-shoulder catch and fights to the five-yard line. Sensing a touchdown, Purdue lines up in their wing tee. Samuels pitches out to Schmeling, who sweeps wide to his left and is tackled on the goal line. After a brief discussion, the ball is ruled down on the one foot line. One foot from a score, Samuels gives to Henniger on the dive play. He piles over right tackle for the Purdue marker. Now State leads only 14 to 7. With less than four minutes left in the game, Samuels fades back to pass. He tosses to Earl Henniger on the Spartan 31, and Earl runs the screen pass back hard all the way down to the nine. It's first down on the nine now, and from a wing tee to the right, Samuels pitches to Schmeling, who runs wide to the right, but it's well met and manages to get only one yard. On second down, the left end is split wide, and the left tackle is an eligible receiver. Samuels jumps and throws, but Doug Weaver of the Spartans intercepts, snuffing out the Purdue scoring threat. The game ends with the Spartans ahead, 14 to seven. <laughs> Purdue won the toss at Minnesota and elected to receive, so the Gophers in the dark jerseys kicked to Ted Locke, who brought the ball back to the Purdue 39. On the first play from scrimmage, Max Schmeling breaks through a beautiful hole between guard and tackle. But one of his own blockers knocks the ball out of his grasp, and the Gophers fall on the ball on the Purdue 39. After several running plays, Minnesota came out in a single wing to the right. Giel at tailback throws out left to Bob McNamara for a 14-yard gain and the first down on the Purdue 22. 
The Gophers operate from a tee on this next play. Quarterback Don Swanson does the throwing, and he hits Paul Giel. Giel carries to the Purdue 11-yard line. After several running plays and a penalty against Purdue, Minnesota shifts into a single wing. Tailback Giel shakes a tackle around the nine and gets to the one-foot line before he stops. From the T formation, Swanson leaps over center for the touchdown. And Minnesota leads seven to nothing. Later, Purdue comes out in a wing team right with second and ten. Samuels drops back to his own 30, then rifles a pass to Flowers on the Minnesota 30. Flowers makes another great catch and fights to the 25-yard line of the Gophers. With a first down, the Boilermakers split their right end, and the handoff goes to Rex Brock, who picks and plows his way 16 yards to the Minnesota 9. Schmeling moved the ball eight yards in three tries, and on fourth down, Earl Henniger tries to power the center of the line. The Gophers hold firm, and the Boilermakers scoring dot. In the second half, the Gophers shift from the tee to the single wing, and on the buck lateral, Giel fades to throw. He pegs one to McNamara again, who catches it on the 46 and then runs down the sideline to the 34. With Paul Giel in the driver's seat on the single wing to the left, the Gophers run the buck lateral series again, and Giel winds up by throwing a screen pass out to the right to Ron Wallin. The play picks up 17 yards to the Purdue 17. Four downs later, Wallin bucks over left guard to the Purdue one-yard line. On a quickie, Giel dives through the left side of his line to put Minnesota in front, 14 to nothing. Striking back from the to his 12-yard line, and then Samuel spotted Rex Brock all alone in the end zone and hit him with a perfect pass that got into the scoring column with seven points. Late in the fourth quarter, Minnesota punted, and the Boilermakers tried to pass Samuels to Henniger that was incomplete. On second down, Purdue lines up on a wing tee, and Samuels passes over the line to Flowers, who snares the ball on the 45, spins away from the defender, and heads down the far sideline to the Minnesota 42. The Purdue team lines up in a duplicate of the last formation, and Samuels fades back to the midfield strike before uncorking a deep pass to Flowers. Flowers is interfered with by McNamara on the 12 and sprawls on the 5. The officials rule the pass complete on the 12. This play with time running out, Samuels hands to Johnny Kerr on an end around. Kerr 12 yards to score and gives Purdue a 14 all tie with Minnesota. <laughs> The Boilermakers in the white jersey started out in high gear in the Michigan game. With the ball on their own 48, Purdue kicks to the Wolverines. But on the Michigan 16, John Kerr smacks into him, Perry fumbles, and Jerry Stupak recovers for Purdue. With first down on Michigan 16, Samuels gives to Schmeling, fakes to Klesek while Max is powering for five yards over right guard. On the Michigan 11-yard line, Purdue comes out in the wing tee right. Samuels hands to Klesak, who tries the center of the line, but's held to a one-yard gain. Then Dale Samuels fades to his left and throws a pass to Bernie Flowers, who's angling for the sidelines. Flowers latches onto the leather for another first down on the Michigan three. With the wing tee set left, but the line unbalanced right, Klesak tries again, but's held for no gain by the Michigan forward wall. On second down, Schmeling gets a hole and goes over left tackle for the game's first score. Samuels converts and Purdue leads seven to nothing. Michigan received the kickoff, but shortly after, sending a man in motion to the right from their single wing, Ted Kress fades, then throws a pass that's hauled in by Purdue's Eddie Zembel on Michigan's 48. Zembel fumbles, but Phil Mateo recovers for the Boilermakers on the midfield strike. On the first play from the wing tee right, Samuels pitches a pass to John Kerr, good for 12 yards to Michigan's 38-yard line. From the same formation to the right, Samuels runs out to his left, then throws down the middle to Kerr. 
and is dumped on the 24 for another first down. T with the right end split wide. Samuels throws down the middle again to Flowers, who's hit hard on the Michigan 15-yard line. A few moments later, the quarter ends. Two made a few short gains, but these were offset by a 15-yard penalty. Then Samuels threw to Klesek on the screen left. Phil heads for the sideline, but's dumped out of bounds on the 16-yard line, two years down. Jim Reichert comes in and boots a field goal that puts Purdue ahead 10 to nothing. Kick to Michigan, and Frank Howell returned the ball for the Wolverines. Howell took the ball on the three, and then weaved up the middle to the 34. On the next play, Michigan's Ted Toper hands off to Dick Balsizer, who races to the Michigan... But he laterals to Howell, who carries for seven more yards before Matea stops him. Michigan moved to the Purdue 20, and then from the single wing right, Kress lobs a pass out right to Toper. The play is good for only two yards, but a holding penalty against Purdue gives Michigan a first down on the Purdue 2. The first play is a reverse from the single wing to the right. Wing back Tony Branoff circles his left end and hits into the corner of the end zone for the first Michigan points. They convert and fail Purdue 10 to 7. Dan Krinsick recovered a fumble for Purdue and with two quarterbacks in the game, Samuels runs to his right, hands to Evans who comes back into the middle and throws long to Bernie Flowers. Flowers is in the curve, but just in the nick of time, Don Oldham knocks the ball out of his hand and the half ends with no change in the score. Early in the third period, Norm Montgomery, back to kick, drops the ball on fourth down, and Michigan takes over on Purdue's 44. In the second play after this, Balsizer runs to his left and throws downfield to end Lowell Perry for eight yards. Michigan lines up in the wing tee to the right and then shifts into the single wing right. Balsizer carries again, and he runs up the middle till he's stopped by Zemble and two other Purdue players. Purdue managed to stymie Michigan's ground game, but Oosterbahn's men shift into their single wing again. And tailback Ted Kress passes deep toward the end zone to Thad Stanford, who's forced out of bounds by Montgomery on the five-yard line. On the next play, Michigan again shifts into the single wing to the right. Kress at tailback passes again, this time to Toper, who's gotten into the end zone. He takes it for the score that puts the Wolverines in front, 14 to 10. With less than three minutes remaining, Purdue Samuels passes from the spread formation. He throws to Phil Klesek, but Don Oldham of Michigan latches onto the ball and then speeds down the far sideline to the Purdue five-yard line. Michigan, eager for another score that will ice the game, shifts into the single wing to the right. Frank Howells handed the ball in the reverse, and he runs wide getting to the two-yard line before Alan Hager and Norm Montgomery tackle him. Michigan uses a tee with an unbalanced line to try and punch the last two yards, but Howell fumbles on the goal line. Michigan, however, recovers on the one-foot line. From the same unbalanced tee, Howell goes over with Michigan's last touchdown, and the Wolverines win 21-10. Indiana in light jerseys punted to Purdue early in this traditional game, and on first down, Max Schmeling piles through left tackle for a six-yard gain. On the next play, Dale Samuels calls, fakes to Schmeling, and then hands to Brock. Rex goes for seven more yards and a first down on the IU 27. On the next play, Purdue sets a man to the right. Samuels runs out to the right, and then throws a short pass to Henniger. Earl is forced out of bounds on the Indian yard line. When a running play fails to gain, Samuels elects to throw down the middle to Flowers for a first down on the two. Then from the wing tee set right, Henniger bangs up the middle but finds no hole. On the next play, Max Schmeling takes the handoff. He barrels over left tackle and chalks up the first six-pointer for Purdue. The conversion makes it seven to nothing. 
Indiana pointed to Purdue again, and with the ball in their own 45, the Boilermakers set a man to the right. Samuels throws right to Earl Henniger, who spins away from a tackler on the 48 and keeps turning to the IU 47. A clipping penalty nullifies this game. On the next play with the line of scrimmage on their own 38, Purdue Samuels takes one step back and then cuts one loose down the middle of Flowers. Flowers battles his way to the IU 45 for a 17-yard gain. On the 42-yard line, Purdue goes into a wing tee right. Samuels hands to Henniger, and aided by a good block by Bernie Flowers. Henniger, carrying a tackler on his back the last few yards, gets to the IU 21. Seconds later, from the wing tee, strong right, Rex Brock carries. He starts wide and then cuts inside his right end. Rex is brought down in the six-yard line. From the same formation, Samuels gives to Schmeling. He smashes up the middle for three more yards, but a flag comes out and the Boilermakers are moved back five yards to the IU 11 for backfield in motion. On fourth down, Purdue tries desperately to score. Samuels directs the play and then throws Rex Brock. Brock makes a one-handed catch on the four, catches his balance, and with the help of crucial blocks by Henniger and Flowers, slips into the end zone with Purdue's second score. Purdue leads 14 to nothing. Indiana took the next kickoff and marched 71 yards to score. Purdue's in a six-man line here as Gedman plunges up the middle to Purdue's 43 before Gutman and Montgomery tackle him. Indiana lost four yards on their next two plays. And then Lou Chile, calling the signals, runs left, and South paws the pass to little Pete Fisher, who's tackled by Kurt Jones on Purdue's 32. In the opening seconds of the next quarter, with the ball on Purdue's 17, Lou Chile throws a running pass to the left to John Zuger in the end zone. Kurt Jones interferes with Zuger, so the pass is ruled completed on Purdue's one-yard line. On the third try from the one, Gedman gets the handoff and pulls his way over left guard for the touchdown, and Purdue leads only 14 to 7. Late in the same quarter, IU recovered a Purdue fumble. The chili fades, and then throws to win Larry Fromhart, who catches the ball on the Purdue 48 and steams to the Purdue 26 before Gutman nails him. Three plays net the Hoosiers five yards, and then the chili who booms down the middle to produce seven before Montgomery and Medea gang him and bring him down. On third down and with five yards left to cover for another TD, Bill Dozier tries for the yardage over right tackle. Preziozio stops him on Purdue's two. On fourth down, Indiana lines up in a straight T. The handoff goes to the powerful Dozier again. He blasts through the same hole for IU's second touchdown. The Chile's conversion ties the score at 14 all. In the third quarter, IU changed to crimson jerseys but retained their white headgear. The Chili's punting for the Hoosiers on fourth down. He gets away a perfect boot from Purdue's 38 that rolls dead on the one. On the next play, Samuels gives to Schmeling, but Max can't hold the handoff, though he does manage to fall on the loose ball for a safety, and two points have put Indiana in front 16 to 14. Midway in the last quarter, Schmeling takes a pitch out on Purdue's 37 and cuts inside right end, picking up 10 yards on his run. Two plays later from a wing tee right, Samuels runs out to the right and throws to Henniger on the 45. Earl's knocked out of bounds on IU's 42. Purdue advances to the IU 29 and then Brock carries over left tackle for five yards. Purdue came out in the tee for the next play, and Samuels gives to Rex Brock again. This time, the little guy rolls over left guard, cuts to his right, and heads for touchdown territory. He dives into the corner of the end zone with the points that enable Purdue to win 21 to 16, and to keep the old open bucket for the fifth year in a row. In addition to the bucket, the win gave Purdue the even more important honor of finishing first in the Western Conference. This site on the scoreboards in Ross 8 Stadium gladdened the hearts of the Boilermakers thousands of their happy fans. While the fans were contemplating the joys of beating Indiana, of being cops in the Big Ten, the thoughts of the coaches were no doubt wandering ahead ten months to the London Ball Cubs for Google Fates. Here's our home schedule.
These are the teams Purdue plays away from home. 